So hey guys, welcome to uh, part two of the Trimoto Yamaha 225DX build. I made a lot of progress since the last video. I stripped it down as you can see and I'll show you in a bit pretty much right down to the frame. And my number one job was the wiring. I wasn't getting any spark right from the get-go amongst a lot of other things. Pretty much everything on this ATV is broken from brakes to frame to electronics there's all kinds of stuff wrong with it but it's slowly coming together and i've gotten some parts in the mail i've ordered some uh, cdi but we'll get into that in a minute um today we're gonna we've got spark last night i finally pieced the last of the electronics together majority of it and uh, i got spark going to the plug so the carbs already been cleaned with any luck today we might be able to start this bad boy so let's do a little walk through So I cleaned up the headlight. The um, lens is still intact. It's over on the shelf. I just wanted to get it on here to complete the connection. So that's really the only thing out of the electronics that's missing is that bulb. But uh, that's connected. I cleaned up this power wire. Right now we don't have a battery. So it, uh, when I got Spark it was based off of the pull start. So we got uh, an inline fuse here from a local electronics shop. Uh, 10 amp I believe it was. And that's uh, wired up fine. You really won't know until the battery's done. Um, just basically detangled the wires coming from the motor, the neutral light. I cleared up all of this. What really happened over here? Not much. I cleaned the carburetor, as you can see. I took that apart, and it wasn't too bad. It wasn't the worst carburetor you've ever seen, but it's got that uh, over there so no debris gets in there. Um, coming back over to this side, we got a new CDI. So, big shout out to the uh, Yamaha three-wheeler group. Uh, the uh, guy on there whose name uh, is escaping right now, Jake maybe, he hooked me up with a nice functional uh, CDI. We got a new coil here, pretty cheap, probably like $15, $20 off of Amazon. Um, I still need to go in and do a better job of clipping in that. I took an old RC battery connector and put it in there, so uh, it seemed to work. I mean, it got spark so far. I uh, got a new spark plug in there. Just went to Canadian Tire today to get the right uh, socket for it. I never had one for something that small. Um, the throttle, I don't know if we went over this last time. I mean, it's pretty dick, but it still has movement. I greased it when I first took it apart. and It was a lot more fluid than that, but now it's giving me a little more resistance. So that's definitely something that's going to have to be addressed. Uh, the, I also ordered a new key. Off the Yamaha three-wheeler group, a guy hooked me up with that. The guy who sent me the wrong CDI did send me the uh, right key and the right kill switch, which is over here. So that was pretty seized up when I got it, however. It was skunked full of dirt and sand and stuff, so I just had to clean that up before that got fluid. So now it's nice and smooth. This could barely move when I got it. The light switch, that's fine now. Starting button is nice. Just need a little grease and love. I uh, took the headlight apart. There's a new bulb in the headlight. Um, when I got in there and cleaned it, I, uh, it was a lot more uh, better of a finish. But I'm still going to go in there with some steel polish or, or something to get more reflection in that lens. But while I was in there, I went ahead and painted the black. That was obviously, as you can anticipate or expect, it was rusty and crappy looking. So I cleaned that up, primed it. Put like a metallic paint on there, just had kicking around, so that's a little cleaner. As far as electronics, guys, I think that's it. I um, There's already oil in it. There has been clean oil in it since I got it. I just picked up an oil filter today, but we're not going to mess around with that until it's started, and I want to change the oil. I'm sure it's probably horrible looking filter, but we'll see. For the most part, stuff really, oh, you probably didn't see that I took the uh, front shocks off. They're uh, one, They're both bent. Well, they were both seized, but when I took them off, one of them got loose, so unseized the shock. And this is the other one. As you can see, the bend right here. This is the one shock. This one, this is seized in here pretty good. This, uh, this bolt, and apparently that's common, so... It's been soaking and soaking. Every time I come out, I, not every time, but I come out and hit it with the WD-40 penetrating fluid as well as this shock right here. It's also been soaking in penetrating fluid the last couple of days. But another thing I ran into while I was here was 
You'll see it better when it's on, but this tire is not, it wasn't dead center once everything was mounted up. I think it's a little to that side, the brake side. And so as you can see, it looks a little tight, but it, there's something definitely going wrong there. I'm looking, it doesn't look like somebody used a rear wheel for it, but I don't really know much about these and I'll see when I uh, finally take it apart. But these tires, I don't know, we'll, we'll cross tires when we, uh, when we get the engine run and get it back together. I took these tires off. Uh, there's definitely a leak in at least one of the two of the tubes, but the tires, I mean, aren't horrible. They're not bald, so if they can be saved, I definitely will save them and clean up the rims. Um, this axle or uh, hub I haven't bothered with. This is anticipated by the guys in the group, this uh, rear um, axle here. I took this all apart because I wanted to disassemble the brakes, but in order to get to that, I had to take this off. In order, Well, I cut the guard off. That wasn't a big deal. It was getting the, I had to get the, fuck, boys, what am I saying? The rotor? Rotor. Off of this to get it out here. But anyway, I had to take that hub off. Banged it, banged it, banged it, banged it, banged the crap out of it. But it did come off. The key was heat. You want to get a little torch. I just went and got a little torch like this. Um, this is what's happened to the hub in the process. So she got warped. Now I'm hoping I can just put a little square, make a little square with some 2x4 chunks, lay it in there so that lip right there, because I can't lay it flat and bang it because of that, that part right there. So hopefully it'll set in that. I'll put the heat and it'll be savable. What else? I don't know what else to tell you as far as what I've been working on with it. Today we're going to try and start it. I, I picked up some fuel line. That was rotted. Oh yeah. We've also, so we just got some quarter inch fuel line. Picked up a new pet cock because the one that was in there is beyond repair. I think that's it for that. Oh, oil filter in here too. This has kind of been my parts wall. So here's some of the stuff like headlight assembly bolts, tail light bulbs, front shock hardware, uh, old brake, rear brake stuff, uh, usable electronics. Uh, what did I do? Oh, another uh, a mod I kind of did on it. Oh, by the way, here's the brake stuff that I took off. That's all prepped and ready to be painted pretty much that part I had trouble finding the neutral light the actual bulb I have the neutral light in assembly so I went to the that same electronic store kind of depot of electronics and they had a 12 volt neutral light or green indicator light so that's on a tube that's up in there it's LED show it should be bright and will illuminate that fine but I just wired that in there. That was the last thing I did last night before getting it started. So sorry, another thing, I took apart the bezel uh, that was uh, goes on the front and I kind of cleaned that up and painted it. So I came out all right. Looking at it after, like you can definitely see it's a, uh, a paint can job, but whatever. Just the main goal is to keep rust from growing. And I also did the, or begun the handlebars. It's just on its probably second coat of primer and I gave up got a respirator for Christmas so that's going to come in handy this needs another couple of coats learn my lesson that you know you definitely want to get some primer but that's the part that the rear brake lines go through both foot and hand control which is something else I need to I have no foot controller there's one on the wall from my bike I might be able to modify it off an old tau tau but I think I'm going to need the actual full pedal for the brakes so uh, here's the golden brown oil which came off the dipstick so it's, I mean, it's good enough for a, a first run, you know? We socked it. We don't know if this bad boy runs, so it's, we're trying to keep the cost down until we know that. If we know it runs good and it doesn't tick and bang and pop, then we'll just start fucking throwing money at it. Okay, so we, uh, we got the rear plastics down. They're not as bad as I remember them. There's a little slice through here. Which I took up those in metal shit and all that. I cleaned up most of it. This lip is busted, which is supposed to be on an angle like that. So that might be a little tricky to fix. See, it's supposed to be on a little step down like that. Uh, but for the most part, everything else is pretty good. I mean, it, that's why I said it will function. Ideally, if you're missing those fenders, um, we'll see what to do with this. But I mean, it does, we'll get the job done. And then. What do we got? This is the seat. I don't know if you remember. It's uh, actually a second thought now that I look at it. I don't know if any of you guys ever watched that video where the guy uses the uh, some sort of silicone and he fills it in in the cracks. 
and then he takes uh, tape and puts it over uh, like a clear Packers tape and then molds it so it fits. Anyway, well, hopefully that'll be in another video. Honestly, by memory, I thought this seat was a lot more shut and it's not. So this is, we're gonna go ahead and call this totally savable. And then here's the tank. So if you checked out the first video, you know, obviously this is in good. So that was my real only crack and that's hardly noticeable, but this was covered in black paint and shit. I did the razor blade technique. You just take a freaking blade and forever, and it just takes off all the oxidization, all the dead, dry plastic that was on it. Now it has a smooth finish. Now I went over it. I don't know what the hell. I don't think I went over it with much, actually, but I'm going to hit it with a torch after and see if that helps. I didn't own a gas torch. I had a heat gun, and I found when you use the heat gun, it would, before it would clear up the scratches, it would start to warp the whole thing. So I, I quit that tank. Uh, the tank cleaned up real nice, like, uh, you know, I cleaned it all up and shit. Uh, I cleaned out the tanks, you saw that in the last video, so everything's legit there. It's plastic, I cleaned out with a bit of gas and seems alright. And here's the petcock, ready to be, hopefully that fits right up to those two holes in that thing, we're about to find out. It's an off impression, but it's, it's a really good off impression. Uh, had Larry David uh -huh. over his house and he played Scarface 24 7 on his big screen. <laughs> and it was one of the ghetto boys. But Scarface. it's an American tale. Yes, it what is. What he did. Talking about all the shit they did, it is a crazy documentary. It's a brutal guard pulling over the uh, Mexican submarine that's filled with coke. Cocaine, okay. yeah. That might be okay. And they jump on top. New petcocks in, new fuel line into here. Cleaned up the wires, kept them away from any of the hot spots like the exhaust or engine as best I could. This is a choke. Right here, what was left of it, like I said, everything is busted on this, so I'm going to quickly pull that back and put a set of ice grips to keep the choke open. And uh, let's add fuel and see if there's any leaks. Should keep the choke open. Put it over here on a freaking quick release. Okay, so we did a quick camera switch. Tried yanking on it. Got a couple of poofs of smoke with the choke open and the throttle open. Uh, it was looking good, but then I started to overflow out of the carburetor. What's that noise? Is that actually the start motor when you do it? Yeah. It's going to the start motor, but it's not. And my neutral light isn't coming on. Something, huh? Something in the hey. valve cover. Run. Back in part of the hole. Can we unrun? Here, you the juice there. Get a little bit of juice. Add a juice. Add a juice now. The battery's totally split. You think? Yeah. I don't think this battery's big enough. Well, it's got. Yeah. See, it's pretty low. Yeah. Fucking everything's grooving. Well, fuel on. Well, at least she's, she is turning over the motor when we do that, so the starter's in gear. It's trying to, anyway. Is there another go? Just leave think, I say just let it fucking go. Okay, so now we're trying to direct to a jumper pack. Choke things up. What the niggers fuck? What's that one, son? Go. So do that again, Broly. So that's what we're getting with the jumper pack straight to it. Before that, it was this was clicking, but then when there was enough power, it would engage the thing. We were just about to give up, and then we had a puff from the pop of hope.
For two <laughs> seconds it ran. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it also burned. Yeah, he's probably, yeah, he's probably open, open that door. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. While we were celebrating, the fucking LED kit came for the truck. Get you! You! Let's open her up, have a look ski, a little break. We'll gather our cigarettes. Uh, oh! These are the interior lights, I think. It's a pack of like 12. And this is the LED light kit. So that's tomorrow's project. Installation intermission. Rocking with the rhythm. Of, is it level? Do that. You're a little out, a little further on that one. Well, you get it where you uh, like. Hold on there. Let me get the fucking eagle eye on her butt. Pull these off. Right there. You happy with that? Yeah. We took a, a friggin' little break. So we got it running. Um, that's what I was going to say. It didn't overflow out the carburetor anymore. So that means the uh, friggin' float needle set. So that's a good thing. We got it running. Uh, I'm just going to look up some tuning specs for the air fuel tonight. How many turns out in, blah, blah, blah. That should get us at a better mark tomorrow when I go fucking with it or whenever. And uh, right now we're installing a little light, a little halogen light setup. Whoa! Profesh! Profesh, bud! How do you turn this bad boy on and off? At the end? Huh? No, you, you just gotta plug it on. Um, plug it and unplug it, okay. Nice. And that's gonna warm up and be brighter here in a minute, isn't it? Yep. Nice. Sweet. Solid, bro. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. Progress is progress. We got it running. Uh, Brad's gone home now. Tomorrow's a new day. I'll see if I can tune that carb up any better. Stoked that it's not leaking. Uh, got a new lighting situation. This is pretty sweet. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for another vid. There'll definitely be more parts to this Yamaha build. Right on.